Well, I was going to see big cameras and freaking lights action. Uh, we go. Uh, I, I go a lot to the riders' like living rooms with my phone and all sorts. Graham Noyce, you probably heard of famous Matt across the Graham Noyce and from England, yeah. world champion. Oh yes, let's get it going. So basically, it's just it's going to be live with us, and then I'll put this on here, and then we can just do a few questions. <clears throat> Hopefully it's going to be these guys. So you coming in now? So you're here all weekend, I know. Hello? You're here all weekend? No, I'm going home as soon as... Oh, right, okay. <clears throat> right, people. Happily Ashby here, Matt Across and Steve Memories. Hope you're all good. I can see a few of you already come in. You never guess who I'm with. Look at this man, super legend, Mr. Barry Briggs. So what we're going to do, we're just going to stick that on your bit there, Barry, so they can hear you. I don't care if they can hear me. As as can hear you. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So that would be good. Yep. Right, let's turn this around. Right, here we go. Here we right. go. How are you doing? All right. So then, Barry, all good? How, how are you, my friend? I'm good. I need you to see your mouth. Oh, sorry, okay. Can you see me all right now? Yeah. yeah. So, Barry, uh, you've come here today for the Swindon Robbins reunion uh, thing here at the Blunsdon Hotel. Seeing some familiar faces? That's right. Back to the old people. <laughs> you got, are you doing interviews in there as well? On the stage? As yeah. Well? yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, must be some severe memories for you this way of the world in Swindon here this weekend. Obviously, you were a massive Swindon Robins legend here for quite a long time. Won a lot of your world titles while you were racing for the Robins. What uh, can you think of some uh, special memories when you think about Swindon Robins? What's the first thing that comes into mind? Well, I, I like the track, and uh, um, we had a good team of local lads, and they, they produced it when they needed to, and we actually won the league one year, so. That was good, you know, because when I was at Wimbledon and that, you had Ronnie Moore and other good riders. But, you know, we had a good, good, what would you say, good class of riders like yeah. Crash and yeah. Kilby and yeah. those kind of boys were, were up, up with the speed. But, you know, Martin was recognised, but a lot of them wouldn't reckon. Mickey Keane and Clive Itches could produce now and again when we needed it. So it, it was a good time for that. Did you actually uh, enjoy the Swindon track? Was that one of your favorite? Yeah, it was, it was difficult to ride. So I had two years of handicapping there. So I had to give everybody a 20-yard start. But you could do that on that track because, because of the way and the shape of the track. You know, you could, you could out, out think them. And it was, you know, better. But I also retired it. You know, in the second year, I had enough of it because you know, um, Peter Craven was dead. Ronnie had a broken leg and um, Bjorn was about to die and over your mere riding rubbish. Yeah. It, was, it was difficult, you know, difficult. It's, it's difficult to explain what it's like to be behind on speedway. You yeah. clean all your gear and the first corner you're covered in rubbish and yeah. mud and, you know, the blokes are only getting extra money, but money was nothing, you know. When you had that uh, big uh, accident at uh, Wembley as well, was it, were you, was it you badly finger as well. Yeah, I, I lost my finger, yeah. Obviously that probably cost you a world title or two, would you say, as well? Oh, yeah, 100 yeah. percent. And that was me trouble that I don't blame Pearson. And Pearson told my teammate Tommy Jansen, who was Swedish, who was at Wimbledon, the way to beat me was knock me off. Yeah. And one night Tommy did that to me and and I what are you doing? And, yeah. and he said, well, Pearson said, and I said, well, just remember, it goes two ways. Tell me when it's on and I figure you're going to be on your asked more than me and he was perfect you know you you can't speedways very close and if you you know and the thing is i you, you probably have to blame pearson but i blame myself because i'd taken three months away from the business to become a speedway rider for one more time yeah. to try to be world champion yeah. and i give him room that i shouldn't have. i should have just held him completely down i didn't do that and I paid the consequences. And I'd already beaten Ivan by half a mile. So, you know, that I was right. I was ready to go. You know. mm. yeah. 
must have been a shame as well. Good uh, memories as well of uh, Southampton and all that, all your Southampton days. Yeah, Southamp Southampton was nice. It was, and I had a, a really top rider there, Bjorn Knudsen, that really kept on, on my toes all the time. Yep. It was a, a decent track. The promotion was good. And um, yeah, it, 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 that was a good time for me as well. So you finished your time in British Speedway with Hull, I believe, was it? Hull Vikings? Um, yeah. How, I, how was that, Barry? How I, did that I, come about? I'm not sure if it was Hull or did I not? Uh, yeah, no, I didn't go to Wimbledon afterwards, did I? Oh, no, that was Wimbledon no. before. Yeah, Hull was a bit of a con trick. Ian Thomas arrived was in it? America and oh, yeah. started giving me all this chat about riding. I never wanted to ride again. I never yeah. thought about it. Yeah. And um, so I, I got a brand new Mercedes from the factory from him, and I thought, well, I, I might as well enjoy going to the tracks. Yeah. And it, it was tough, you know. And it Took me two months of really knocking myself around yeah. to understand that after the first corner, yeah. you you might as well go home. You've got no chance of passing anybody. Yeah, nice. But you know, I was a slow learner on that. But you know, Ian Ian was a proper promoter. You know, he, he knew how to handle it and yeah. he got a deal out of me. And yeah. you know, I didn't didn't really regret it. You know. That's good. What about uh, obviously everyone knows you well as well for your Wimbledon Dons days as well. Your Wimbledon days that must have been. Yeah, the, the Wimbledon days were. It kind of made me because what could I do? I didn't. I come to England with no motorcycle. And they got me a bike, which the American team rode in uh, Dublin, and Ronnie Green at Wimbledon owned the bikes, and he gave me one of them old bikes. So I had no bike, and I was a spear rider, so that was a bit ridiculous. Yeah. And um, but I had Ronnie, and you know, I, bless his soul, you know, Ronnie kind of made me. I think I would have still done it. But he brought it on quicker because he would get a maximum on the Monday night and would be down at the track at 7 o'clock in the morning yeah. to practice with me. Yeah. And uh, nobody ever thought I'd probably be able to race with Ronnie anyhow, good enough. Yeah. But, you know, it changed and, you know, and we were always big friends. And that was a sad part. <coughs> when I left Christchurch, he said, see you, Brigo, I won't see you again. I said, what are you, what are you talking about? He said, well, and I go, ah, bullshit. And unfortunately, a couple of months later, I was down there at his funeral. So, you know, and he, he was generous. But he, <coughs> excuse me, he never made the most of his own ability. Yeah. You know, I find that the world champion, some of the world champions, natural talent, the Jack Young and the Ronnie, they kind of treated as another meeting. And, yeah. you know, Ivan was like life or death. And Ovi was, a, well, most of the blokes were. They kind of, it was serious stuff, you know. So what, uh, what was your like, uh, relationship like with Ovi? Because he was obviously one of your uh, <coughs> challengers. Well, uh, we, were, we, we were quite a big mate to start with. Yeah. And then I don't, uh, we never fell out, but he was competitive. Yeah. And he, he's the same. He's 90-something years old now. And he, walk, he told my Tony last week that he walks uh, 10 kilometres a day or runs 10 wow. kilometres. And he's 90. So, yeah. you know, and he, he's always been. And I didn't think he'd live very long because... When we first met him, all he ate was cornies. I thought, well, he's not going to last very long. Yeah. You know, so he's, he's amazing. Yeah. And he, he rides his motorbike and he, 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 lives, he lives a life. Yeah. I've he, actually been talking to him as well. I'm going to try and do an interview with him mm -hmm. as well, so that would be good. Yeah. But uh, obviously the, <coughs> the contact we've had is through emails and then I get to see your emails. We're always still riding up, like on the, up on the hills and the mountains. We can see all the amazing scenery. So you still love riding the bike? Oh yeah, yeah, but I've got to, I've got to, I've got to put it in to be able to do it. Yeah. You know that you, you kind of you're doing something that's it's dangerous, yeah. and if you don't put it in, you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. So that you know that I've got to walk a couple of miles a day, and and it's worthwhile for what I get out of it. You know, yeah. I, I rode in Poland last week. Tony had an electric bike, oh, yeah. and that physically did you a lot yeah. better than. Even the motocross bike, but it's all all on your hips and that. Yeah. But um, and it, it, it's doing stuff to your body that your body needs. If you you know you think this is going to work, and you just can't sit around because you're going to crash. You still crash no matter how good you are or, or how fit you are. So. You're such a talented motorcyclist in general. It's never been just speedway for you, has it? You've done no, cross no. trials. No. I've seen. I've yeah, I rode the Isle. Of, I rode the Isle of Man and did, did a lap there. And they, well, they actually paid me that. How that ever happened, I don't know. But 
I've always enjoyed the ice racing and I made the ice racing bike on the on the dirt and that was so fast and it, I, I just enjoy it, you know, and, that, and you do what you enjoy. Was there, uh, <clears throat> was there any uh, world titles that meant more to you than any others or they all meant the same thing? No, the, fir the first one's the important one. Yeah, especially. You know, and um, the other ones and then probably the worst ones is the ones that get away. But, you know, I... Yeah. I did my own bikes and that was the biggest mistake of my life. Yeah. You know, I, well, when I won my world champion, I can't say thanks, Guy Allen, or thanks, so and so. Yeah. It was me. Yeah. But then I lost quite a few yeah. by, by, by just slack or not having one. And I'd borrow something. I bought borrowed an engine from Joseph Hofmeister once for a world final. I never, I practiced on it once, I think. Went to Wembley and my first race, I dug a hole that deep, you could get lost in it. So I don't know, I think I might have got second or third. Yeah. Then I won all my other ones. But yeah. then afterwards, I find it, the engine was on 80, 18 to 1 compression. Well, you know, I, I just jumped on it and did the best I could. But, you know, but uh, it's to me, it's now it's just my past. And you're happy with, with what you've done. And I just move on to do what I, what I want to do, you know. Who was the biggest influence on your career in general? In well, Ronnie, Ronnie, would Ronnie. Be, Ronnie would be, and he said an example. But yeah. you know, he, as I say, he 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 was he was kind of happy, you know, sometimes. And he he won his well, one of the world champions when he had just when he had his broken leg, yeah. just you know, because that took all the pressure off him. You know, and talent's not always a thing. You, you've got to be determined. Well, you can't get anybody more determined than Ivan was. Especially back then days, uh, how you got, we had some seriously special riders all come out of New Zealand as well. Obviously, yeah, the, yourself yeah, and yeah, Ivan and yeah. some of that. Sort of. it, it, and speedway was more tricky then. The tracks were tight and turned back. So nowadays it's like a big circle that you kind of set them, set it flat out, and away you go. It's a different type of talent. You know, but you go to Wimbledon or Wolverhampton or those smaller tracks, and it's much more difficult. So, um, was there any uh, tracks in the British League that you didn't get on with too well? No, I, I never ever admitted that I didn't like any place. Like even even you, you know, if you go there with a defeatist attitude, you're never going to make it. So you always had a positive. Yeah, you've got to be positive in life. You know, that's, you think you can do it or don't do it. You know. You've seen so many talented riders over the year, Barry. A few just jumped to mind, even in later times, like Lee Adams, all these guys. What do you think that extra thing is you need? Is it a mental thing? Um, a bit more of, uh, like that, aggressive and competitive. Got to have a bit of edge to you as well to be a world champion. No, I, I, you need some luck, but I, but I think the the main the main thing is you got to, you know, you got to have confidence in your own ability, and you know, it's a grind up it's a grind up deal. It doesn't. It doesn't come easy, you know. But, but um, I think you, 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 how you're brought up. Or, you know, when I look back, I wasn't. We, we come from a poor family. I come to England without a speedway bike, and I was a speedway rider. My homemade set of leathers. I made them, and I won my first race in New Zealand. Fell off after the race, and spent two days in hospital because I didn't put enough padding in the knees. So, lots of things I learned. By you know what what happens like I was at West Ham within two months of coming to England and um, I was supposed to be in a in a race and at the last minute they took me out of the race and put Cyril Maidman in and it was with Ernie Rocio and Ernie got killed and I went holy hell you can get killed at this and that was the biggest awakening of the lot to hey this is not a joke it's kind of serious stuff. So you must have obviously. I know Tony was involved in the. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that was the worst thing when, when Tony did it. Yeah, and obviously, like bringing Tony was involved with the air fences. Yeah, Tony, you know, Tony, Tony. Yeah. So, you know, he's done well. Got to meet him at Cardiff. Thank you very much as well for that as well, Barry. <laughs> Absolute legend. Thank you. My legs are gone, mate. Oh, 